I'm going to start by asking you a question. Where were you at 4.17 p.m. on Thursday, August the 14th, 2003? You might think that's a crazy question. But it isn't really, because you know exactly where you were. This was what psychologists call a flashbulb moment. And ironically, it was a moment when the lights went out. It was the moment of the blackout, the great blackout in 2003. Now, I know where I was. I was sitting in my office, which is about 300 meters from here, just on the other side of the field. And I was working away. And the lights went out, and I went through exactly the same experience that all of you went through. At first, we thought it was a localized power blackout, probably connected to uh, Harris's chronic underfunding of the power system and various other things, and we all had these uh, ha-ha thoughts go through our mind. And then we realized over time in various ways that this was a much more significant event. I realized it because I phoned my wife Sarah outside of the city. Uh, we live outside in, in the town of Fergus, north of Guelph, and the power was off there too. So I phoned my father in British Columbia, and he was listening to the news, and he said, there's a blackout across the whole northeastern part of the continent. Now, I thought this was, as a social scientist, I thought this was an opportunity for some interesting sociological investigation. So I decided to wander through the streets of Toronto and see how people were responding. I went to the core of the city, to the intersection of Young and Bloor, the peak land value intersection, some people would call it. And, and it was remarkable. People were, direct, were directing traffic. People were unperturbed for the most part, even happy. You know, this was an interesting diversion from a very hot summer day. And then I turned around and I looked south, down Young Street towards the core of the city with the high rises and the towers in the distance. And I saw something quite remarkable. I saw tens of thousands of people walking up Young Street, walking towards me. As I stood there, I realized that I'd seen this before, something like this before. And I realized that what, I, what it was, was the scene from 9-11, when people were walking out of Manhattan. Now, I thought a lot about this particular episode as I've been working on my most recent book. Because I think it's something of a metaphor for our dependence on technology, our dependence on surprisingly unresilient systems, economic, political, social, and ecological systems. I don't think this is going to be the last time that we see people walking out of our cities, or that we walk out of our cities ourselves. And in the future, it might not be so benign. In the future, we might be very scared. Because we've created systems around us that are extraordinarily vulnerable to collapse. And they are becoming increasingly vulnerable in a variety of ways. So my take home message today is very simple. When you leave this session and say Homer Dixon was talking about resilience. That's the idea I want to get across. We need to start building resilience into all the systems in our world into our global systems, into our national systems, political, economic, technological, like power grids, and into our personal lives. We need to do this as a people, as individuals, as a country, and as a species. But instead, at the moment, we're going in exactly the opposite direction. And let me give you a clue, or some evidence, that we are going in exactly the opposite direction. At the time of the blackout, I started thinking about all those people in the high-rises down on the waterfront. Lots of seniors live down there. These buildings are 20, 30, 40 stories high. The elevators don't work. You can't get water on the top floors. The windows don't open. And the air conditioning was off. Now think about that. Think about what would have happened if that blackout had gone on in 35 degree temperatures for another two days. We would have had a catastrophe along the waterfront. We would have been trying to pull our seniors out of those buildings, and a lot of them wouldn't have made it. Now that is not a resilient society. That is exactly the opposite. That's a brittle society, it's a brittle system. 